Miss Jackie. Why, thank you, Marilee. Oh, so, so fabulous. Absolutely. It's, you know, it's exciting. It's daunting. So why did you run for as a president? Oh, why did I, you know, this is when you ask yourself that question. <laughs> <laughs> I fell in love with SA the first time I went to an SA conference, which was something like 1986. It's just such a cornucopia of fabulous stuff to learn, and archivists are very cool. So what do you think you want to do with the society, since you love it so much? I mean, what are your top concerns? Oh, concerns? this is such a Jen question. <laughs> <laughs> Jen never asks easy questions. One thing I actually feel really strongly about, though, and uh, I, um, I actually worked on this in some small ways when I was on the SA Council a while back, is um, growing all those great kids to grow the archives profession. And, uh, you know, what kind of other ways can we find to listen to them, to learn from them, to, you know, really help them thrive, to make them feel like they're part of things? So we've got oh, the okay. SAA conference coming up in August. What are you going to yeah. be doing between now and then? You got other conferences you're going to? Oh, what's coming up? Well, in June will be uh, RBMS, the Rare Books and right. Manuscripts section of ALA. Um, I'm giving a talk there about next gen cataloging. Not this gen. No. <laughs> <laughs> next gen. I got it. So. Uh, <laughs> How has the landscape changed, and how should rare book and special collections catalogers be thinking about doing their work in this really different data world? And then, a couple weeks after that, um, very exciting, Jen and Ricky and I are all going to Liber, the League of European Research Libraries in Barcelona, um, and they're, gonna, they're all focused on the digital future, like everybody else, and they're going to have one day on heritage collections in the digital future. Um, and uh, there should be some interesting stuff there. So, so what do you think about you know all the social media? Do you blog or? It's important to document what our president thinks. It about is very important. Media. Well, I signed on to fa Facebook in uh, the summer of 2008 when I found out that Marilee Prophet <laughs> was friends with the most unlikely rare book person, and I kind of have never looked back. It's well, just so much fun. You play Scrabble. I found out I could play Scrabble, but I also, but I also got it. I mean, I very much combine personal and professional stuff there. People just send out so many great links. You yeah. find out about so much stuff there that you don't even find out from Mark Matienzo's great archives blog aggregator, and it's just fun. Okay, so tell me this: What should SA be doing with social media that it's not? Should we have SA blogs? I'm beginning to wonder if it isn't better when people do it personally. And when the associations and the corporations do it, I mean, it's kind of, like you say, not so interesting. Well, so you need to make it interesting. Right? There you go. No, you need to make it interesting. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's the people. I mean, I, I think that people would be interested to see people from council blog. Exactly. Or, well, exactly. Or, you know, not the association, but, yeah. the, but the archivists. Or what do you think about blah, blah, blah? Well, so you know, that makes me think that certainly the new archivist of the United States, his blogging is followed avidly. Mm -hmm. right? So maybe Madam President needs to do no. a little bit of, no, okay. <laughs> like I said, I'm good at delegating. <laughs> <laughs> Merely Prophet will be your press secretary. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and of course, we, we all blog uh, on our wonderful OCLC research blog, hangingtogether.org. And... Uh, you know, I was so intimidated the first time Marilee was going to make me blog. I don't know. It's like you're used to really formally writing when you're going to write. It made me very nervous. There's a surprising lack of cats in your blog. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> or would you like to see pictures? <laughs> Some of us at OCLC Research would like to hear a little bit about how you think you're going to balance your roles as, a, say, a president and your <laughs> role at OCLC Research. Having uh, Jim's support to do this is, of course, very, very important. One of the reasons I think he can support this is um, that the kind of work we do is so outward looking, and we all work so much with um, the parts of the research library and archives and museums communities that we all have some kind of expertise with. and so. Being out there, we're used to being out there, we're used to looking to trends and issues, we're used to 
trying to push the envelope. So that seems like really good practice for um, uh, for having an opportunity again to be part of SAA governance and try to you know find some ways to press the organization forward. Okay, what I was really getting at was oh. is that project that you and I are working on. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. That's our born digital project. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm passionate about that project. As you know, my chief impetus for wanting to devise that project was born digital baby steps and how many archives and research libraries, at least, have just not even started to get off the born digital dime. So the technology is one of uh, SAA's huge threads, one of their, in fact, strategic, you know, foc focuses. Um, and people have been doing stuff to work on Born Digital for a long, long time um, and making lots of progress. Oh no, this project is going. Good. Hey, so speaking of technology, yeah. you know, there are issues like that. So it's come up recently that you know, Google and Apple and AT&T and all of these organizations have secretly been tracking people's information via yeah. their smartphones, which of course yeah. raises real privacy issues. Yeah. So what do you think? Should SAA start to keep like way better tabs on their members? <laughs> <laughs> oh my What's your gosh, position I, on I hadn't even thought of the potential for that. <laughs> um, archivists are surely really in tune with these issues because privacy, um, the antithesis of privacy, which is openness, um, making sure that we don't, re in the government, doesn't restrict information that should be open. Archives, the foundation of, ge of, of geometry. <laughs> <laughs> Archives are a foundation of democracy, as we all know. Right, so, so archivists should have no problem being completely open about their whereabouts at all. <laughs> Well, especially the ones on council, right? Yeah. When you need right, them, right, you right, got right. That's yeah. true, that's true. Have you have you installed something in the back of my neck? <laughs> <laughs> Keeping track of Jackie. So, Jackie, um, this is the Society of American Archivists. Indeed so, it is. Uh, can we see your birth certificate? Oh, you bet you can, you know. Anybody running for president these days knows they got to be prepared at all times. We have a... The state of Wisconsin only has one form, no. so, you know, here you go, here you go, <laughs> Eat it up. legit. Eat it up, everybody. But that said, it's not a requirement <laughs> to be a citizen of the United States to be president of the Society of American Archivists. We are very ecumenical and international. And <laughs> so, well, congratulations, <laughs> Madam President. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. That's a wrap. <laughs>